Hey everybody, we're back for another read aloud. Today we're going to be reading How I Met My Monster and it's written by Amanda Knoll and it's illustrated by Howard McWilliam. So we've read one of these books on when his monster took a vacation. Now we're going to figure out or find out how he met his monster. To McKay... Brett, Casey, and Dylan, who would never grow too old for monsters. One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. It says, Monster here for final test, Z. Or meat here for final test. Ha, my parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumpled the paper, grabbed my truck, and zipped over to my garage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night. But then, a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See, now he knows we're here. The voice sighed. One of you have broken the monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed, never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized it must be, or this one must be their teacher. I sat up straight and mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled, Get the child into bed. That is correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would, nev I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath, opened his mouth, and let out a tiny burp. Stomach rumbling would have a better chance of getting me into bed than that funny little noise, I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary, Genghis. I'm sorry. You're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking as Genghis slunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked, Now who wants to try to get the child into bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monster. Look at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then he took a step toward me and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgles seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure that little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. Right, you three. The child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. And who can tell me that what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in the bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets, shadow puppets, she squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose and snickered, but Mr. Z said, Interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows bobble, bobbed, or bobbled, yeah, blobbled onto the wall and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Achoo! Morgan stopped at once. Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. Morgan's arms flopped to her sides, and she scuttled underneath my bed. There was some more creaking, and Morgan was gone. After all the sneezing, I needed a tissue, and suddenly a huge shadow of uncut claws were on my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Power, powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z, but do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, chirped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail, Mr. Z continued, and one of you must get him back. Let's revisit rule number one, maintain the element of surprise. All at once, poof, the monsters vanished. 
Then I heard more rumbling. They were hiding in my closet, making noise, or were they hiding in my closet, making noises to scare me? Ha! No, it was only my stomach grumbling. All this excitement, it was making me hungry. It wouldn't make me hungry if there was a bunch of monsters in my room. I tiptoed past the closet and peeked out the door. So far, so good. No monsters. Then I stepped over the squeaky chair and sneaked down to the kitchen. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some clattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't that toe-loving Gabe. It looks like it's coming from the refrigerator. I yanked open the fridge. Ha! It wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster shivering on a shelf. <laughs> Found you, I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z, but this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined, it's not my fault that he's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. So all's left is Gabe. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall and went into the bath bathroom to brush my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there and he was huge. He was eating the crumbs we can see. He kept eating the crumbs and he was growing bigger and bigger as he was eating them. <laughs> I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leaped onto the bed, I knew that my toes were safe. Whew. I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed, ragged breathing, and stomach rumbling. Hey, kid, Gabe growled. Good to see you. I pulled my covers up tight. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. I remember that from the last book, The Green Ooze. The bed quivered and Gabe unfurled his spiky tail. Well, this looks promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone. I was alone with Gabe. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. H How'd you get so big? I gasped. Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow, so thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I can munch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe wouldn't could, or couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. So he's a pretty hard kid to scare. <laughs> no toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, tossing a toy stuffed monster off the bed. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is a, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. No other monster can scare you like me, or scare me like you, I giggled. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned and then shivered again, and I was asleep in no time. So we got to see how he met Gabe. That was neat. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this book, and I will...